Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We're given f of x over x squared plus x plus 1 equals x squared divided by x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1. And we're going to be solving for f of x. In other words, we're going to find an expression that gives us f of x in terms of x. Can we do it? Let's find out. So I'll be presenting two methods and let's start with the first one. Now, my first method is, since I'm trying to find an expression for f of x and I cannot do it directly, I'll do it indirectly. So I'm going to go ahead and set this whole thing inside the parentheses on the left-hand side equal to another variable. How about t? All right, by setting that whole thing equal to t, I'm finding something like f of t, but of course, uh, the right-hand side needs to be in terms of t as well. So I need to solve for x in terms of t. Make sense? Okay, great. Let's go ahead and write this down. x divided by x squared plus x plus 1 equals t. So my goal, again, is to solve for x and then substitute it on the right-hand side. So we can get f of t. And now we can all already switch to f of x from there. To be able to solve for x, I'm going to cross multiply first. x equals t x squared plus tx plus t. Let's put everything on the same side, tx squared plus tx minus x. That's going to be t minus 1 multiplied by x. And then plus t equals 0. As you can see, this is quadratic in x, not in t. It's quadratic in x. And we're trying to solve for x, so that makes sense. Let's go ahead and solve it using the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula says negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. And 4ac would be 4t squared. Awesome. Let's go ahead and divide that whole thing by 2a, which is 2t. 2t or not 2t? That's the tutor's problem. Now, if you expand inside the radical, you get t squared minus 2t minus 1. In other words, this is the discriminant plus 1 minus 4t squared. That'll give you negative 3t squared minus 2t plus 1. Now, why is that important? I don't know, but I just wanted to write it. So now we can plug it in. And there are two solutions from here. Should we, which one should we use? And my understanding is it doesn't matter. So let's go with the plus sign. Okay. So the square root of delta, which is negative 3t squared minus 2t plus 1. And all of that is divided by 2t. Awesome. Now we're going to go ahead and plug it in on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and remember one more time. When we replace that thing with t, we got t. But on the right-hand side, we still have this, right? So now what I need to do is replace x with this. Uh-oh, that's too big, right? Gigantic, com confusing, complicated. We're going to go ahead and do that. Did I tell you this method may end up being incomplete? Forgive me for that because this looks like a lot of work and I'm kind of too lazy. Maybe I'll do a little bit. So to find f of t from here, you need to replace x with this. So that's going to look like this. 1 minus t plus the square root of negative 3t squared minus 2t plus 1 all over 2t needs to be squared because that replaces x divided by that same expression. And I'll probably, you know what? I don't want it to cut off. I don't want it to cut off. Uh oh, I already cut it off. I can fix it though. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and erase this. So now I have this whole thing. Obviously, this is for uh, x and this will be squared. In the denominator, I need to have x to the fourth plus x squared plus one. So this x to the fourth will be just the same thing, but this time you're going to raise it to the fourth power. So I might as well just find the square of that thing because I'll have to square that again anyways, right? So it'll be the fourth power plus the same thing squared, right? Oops, it's supposed to be a minus sign. So I'm kind of copying the same thing over and over and then plus one. So ideally, this should give me something simple. Now let's see what's gonna happen at the end. We're gonna square the numerator and the denominator. We're gonna get 4t squared as a denominator. We're also gonna get 4t squared from here. When we make a common denominator, they're gonna all cancel out. So we're basically interested in the numerators only, right? So 
Let's see if we can do that because denominators don't matter. They're just going to cancel out anyways. How do you square something like this, right? Well, I mean the numerator. Well, it's kind of like uh, sum of two things, maybe. Square this. And then when you square the radical, it's just going to be without the radical. So like this. This is a squared plus b squared. And then there's the 2ab, which is this one, multiplied by the radical. So that's going to be our numerator, which is fairly simple, right? And of course, if you are able to simplify this, this will be x squared, and then you'll have x to the fourth, and so on and so forth. Maybe you can kind of take this and simplify as much as possible, and then do the rest, because otherwise you're going to be repeating a lot of the same steps. It's going to be too much work. I mean, even people who has patience, I guess, will probably grow tired of it. But if you kind of look at the numerator, I don't really see anything that simplifies real quick, but let's find out anyways. 1 plus t squared minus 2t minus 3t squared minus 2t. Uh-oh, they didn't cancel out. Plus 1. And this is just a radical. So what's the use? I don't know. We probably will end up in uh, with a radical in the denominator. And then we'll use the conjugates. I have a feeling that conjugates will make this a lot simpler. But if you kind of look at this, this should give you negative 2t squared and then minus 4t and then plus 1 plus 1 should give me plus 2. And when I factor out a negative 2 or a positive 2, I should be getting something like t squared, 2t, and 1. I don't know if it's going to help. t squared, 2t, and 1. Yes, absolutely, that should. Why? Because it is basically... Is, is that what I think it is? No, that's not what it is. Okay, never mind. I thought it was a perfect square, but that's not the case. But that's okay. So, again, this is a lot of work, way too much work. Don't do this, right? Well, why did I show you? Because that's one way to solve the problem. Now, here is my favorite method, okay? Why do you show it second? Because that's the fun part. First, uh, you have to kind of endure the pain because no pain, no gain, okay? So now let's go ahead and take a look at the cooler method. So here's how the cooler method works. Again, we can set it to something like t. And then, but do things a little differently here. Why? Because if you go ahead and kind of flip this thing, you're going to get a really cool thing. Look, if you flip, you're going to get 1 over t. Well, it's going to be separable. x plus 1 plus 1 over x equals 1 over t. And what should I do from here? Isolate x plus 1 over x. And I'll show you or I'll tell you why you need to do that. Let's go ahead and save it for now and then get on with the other side. Okay, if you look at the other side and call this, I don't know, u, u equals or x squared divided by x to the fourth plus x squared plus 1 equals u. I'm going to flip this too because when I flip, uh, it's also separable. It actually works really nicely. This is 1 over u. And when you split it up, it's going to become x squared plus 1 plus 1 over x squared equals 1 over u. And remember, I'm trying to associate these two things, t and u, sort of, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and square both sides here. That's going to give me x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 2ab, which is going to give me 2, equals 1 over t minus 1 quantity squared. Let's leave it like that for now. And then from here, I'd like to isolate this. Oops, I wanted to subtract 2 from both sides. That should give me, and again, leave it like this, don't expand, okay? Now, why is that significant? Because that's something I can substitute on the right-hand side. But what is, one, what is u, though? u is going to be 1 over that. So let's go ahead and write it that way. This is u, and now we have f of t, right? So f of t equals u. Isn't that awesome? So how do you associate t and u now? So let's go ahead and take a look. u is equal to this, right? 1 over x squared plus 1 over x squared plus 1. Well, we know that this is equal to that. So now we're gonna, I'm going to substitute that here. So f of t equals u equals 1 over. I'm going to now use the t term. This one from here. Minus 2, which replaces that, plus 1. Guess what? Forget about the u now, and you got f of t. What is f of t? f of t is equal to 1 over 1 over t minus 1 squared 
minus 1. Now, do you want to simplify this a little bit more? Yeah, because 1 cancels out. This gives us 1 over t squared plus 1 minus 2 over t minus 1. These two cancel out. And if you make a common denominator, you're going to get 1 minus 2t over t squared. And if you flip, f of t can be written as t squared divided by 1 minus 2t. 2t or not 2t. That's the decision you need to make if you want to become a tutor. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.